Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to journaling video number two. I'm starting off by making my October to be watched spread. I could have made it a general fall to be watched spread, but I'm scared I would start adding way too many things on it and then I wouldn't watch anything. Most of what's on my list is a TV show. Actually, I guess I should read them to you since I always do the writing at the very end. So on my to be watched list is Halloween Wars, my favorite. I would never ever skip it. Halloween Baking Championship, which is really good, but not as good as Halloween Wars to me. The Grinch Halloween special, the Garfield Halloween special. And then if you are like me and you grew up watching ABC Family's 31 Nights of Halloween, which used to be 13 Nights of Halloween, I'm pretty sure. Also, they're called Freeform now. They're not even called ABC Family. But anyway, I checked their schedule as I always do whenever they release it and per usual, nothing. But I did see one day that the adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad were supposed to be on. Honestly, at this point, I may have already missed the movie. I can't remember what day it said it was on, but it's on my list nonetheless because I've never seen it. And then my favorite movie, my favorite Halloween movie of all time, which I have not seen in years and that I want to force myself to watch this year, Monster House. Where are my Monster House lovers? I swear anytime I see anyone talk about their favorite Halloween movies, they never ever breathe a word about Monster House and it's my favorite. I haven't seen it in so long, so I really wanted to make myself watch it this year. Another movie I haven't seen recently, but I feel like I've seen within the last like four years is Corpse Bride, my second favorite Halloween movie. Sometimes it's on the 31 Nights of Halloween listing, but oftentimes it's not. I don't know why like every four years they suddenly put it on. I assume it's something, you know, like behind the scenes, like licensing issues, but I definitely saw it more recently than Monster House. So I wasn't really concerned about putting it on the list this year. And then of course, like if there's, I don't know, like The Nightmare Before Christmas, if it's on and I happen to catch it on, like sure, I'll watch it. But in general, I just don't really have the tradition of re-watching the same Halloween movies each year. For me, I think it's kind of fun to revisit them every so often as opposed to every single year. And the last thing on my to be watched list is Gravity Falls. Oh my gosh, I can already speak on Gravity Falls because I have been watching season one. The whole entire season one is on YouTube. So I've been having so much fun watching that. My favorite thing to do recently has been to sit down and color. That has been so fun. I'll definitely talk more about Gravity Falls whenever I finish it because I know I'll make a spread about it. But basically, I knew I hadn't seen the entirety of season one. I knew that I watched some of Gravity Falls whenever it first came on so long ago. Also, I looked up when Gravity Falls came on. I thought it came out in like maybe, I don't know, 2017, 2012. I couldn't even believe that. I was like, whoa. So I knew I'd seen the beginning of season one, like the episodes, I knew I'd seen them multiple times, but I determined since I've been watching, I determined that I did not see past episode 12. Like everything past that is new to me. So I've been having so much fun. I can't wait to get more into the mystery of Gravity Falls. Like I know who Bill Cipher is, but I also don't know who he is. You know what I'm saying? Like I know who he is as a character. Like I've seen just like him. Somehow I have not, in all of these years, somehow I've not been spoiled about Gravity Falls. Like I don't know what is going on at all in the show. I don't know how I've escaped that. That's a very long time to have not gotten spoilers. But anyway, like I said, I'll talk about Gravity Falls more later whenever I do finish the show. I don't even know how I'm gonna watch season two. My best friend has Disney Plus, but I really don't wanna ask her like, hey, can I, can I log into your account? I just really don't wanna ask her. I'll figure it out. But anyway, I did wanna talk about this spread. The right hand side of the spread is actually inspired by a binder refill, I think it was. I saw it in a Korean journaler's video. They were doing like a haul of new stationery. And unfortunately, I don't know who the illustrator is of that. I would love to know because I would love to look through the rest of the stationery that they have for sale. But if I somehow figure out the illustrator's name before I post this video, I'll definitely put it on the screen. But I honestly don't even know how I would figure it out. And I also, I don't even remember whose video I was watching. So I can't even go back to make sure that I didn't miss it, but I'm pretty sure that it wasn't mentioned anywhere, unfortunately. But that's the end of this spread. And I think I have a pretty manageable and reasonable amount of things to watch. I'm pretty sure I can get through this entire list before the end of October. I believe in myself. The next spread I'm making is also for my archive journal and it's my fall bucket list slash Halloween want to buy list. When I started this spread, I realized um, I have like two things that I wanna do during the fall. So it really doesn't make any sense to make an entire spread if there's nothing that I really want to do. And then I thought, oh, I know, I have a lot of things that I want to buy that I probably will not end up buying, but that I would like to buy like in an ideal world. And I was like, I'll just combine the two together. Also, I've already checked off at least two things from my bucket list. So I feel like 
it's already almost done. It's already almost completed. So on my bucket list for fall is number one, I want to find the best decorations in my town. And I kind of feel like I already did that. Would you believe it that there is an enormous, beautiful display of Halloween decorations, maybe five minutes away from my house. I couldn't believe it. I thought I was going to have to like, I don't know, go through like rich neighborhoods or something like that. No, it's just right down the road. I was so shocked to see it. I wish I had pictures or videos, anything right now, because I want you to see too. But what happened is that where the house is, whenever we drive past it, it's on the driver's side and I'm never the driver, I'm always the passenger. So it would be kind of hard to take any photos or videos that way anyway. And then, I don't know if you know this, if you live outside of America, but there was a really devastating hurricane that came through. And so they took all of their decorations down, of course, because even though it wasn't too bad where I live, I can imagine that their decorations were very expensive and that they didn't want them to get damaged in the storm. So they took everything down. So the last time that I went past there, they had everything down, like maybe one fourth of the stuff was still up. So I have not been back past there since they put everything back up, but I do think they've put everything back up. So I will be attempting to get some photos. Oh my gosh, I wish I could even explain it to you. Like they have multiple of the giant 12 foot skeletons. They have a big blow up thing of pumpkins. It's probably like 20 feet tall. Oh my gosh, I love it. Also my elementary school is in that direction and I'm just picturing all of the kids on their way to school and like the morning whenever like the, the decorations were first up. Oh my gosh, they must have been so excited to see that. <laughs> anyway, I'm going way too slowly. I talked too long about that. So the next thing is to make Halloween themed food. I actually have something to say about that in a second due to a product I wanted not being available. I'll get into that in a minute when I get into my want to buy list. Um, the third thing was that I wanted to test new soups. Friends, when I tell you I pirated a <laughs> cookbook literally last night, I think I might have pinned a few things on Pinterest too, like some newer soups to try out, but I got a whole cookbook. Like I was not even kidding around. My favorite cookbooks are the Taste of Home ones, if anyone cares. And the other thing that I've already done on my bucket list is I wanted to redecorate my adorable home houses. I feel like I talked about adorable home in another one of my videos, maybe like back in the summer. I can't even remember now, but YouTube has that YouTube playables section now. And one of the games is adorable home. And for fall, they have like a whole entire brand new autumn, like, I don't know what you would call it, like a decoration kit, I guess. And there were new items for the bedroom, the bathroom and the living room. So I went through and I redid both of my houses because I have this YouTube account, of course. And then I also have like my personal YouTube account, I guess you would call it just like, you know, the YouTube account I've had for forever since I was a teenager. And in the game, when you buy new things to decorate your house with, you get new visitors, which are little animal friends. And so I have so many new like autumnal friends. Like I have a badger now, I have an owl. His name is Oz, that's so cute. I think there's um, supposed to be like a squirrel. I have not gotten the squirrel though. So now let me get into my want to buy list. I kind of split this up into where, like which stores I thought I would get it from. So like dollar store, I have a ghost mug. I never found it. I'm not even looking for it anymore. The ghost mug and I are just not meant to be. Apparently for $1.25, how could you pass up a ghost mug? But anyway, um, a clear glass pumpkin lantern. For some reason, for literally every single other year of my life, they've had these clear lanterns out because I have the same exact ones, but orange. And I really wanted a clear one for my bedroom. But now all of a sudden in the year 2024, they don't have them. Okay. Um, I wanted to get some battery tea lights because I thought I was going to get a new pumpkin lantern, but I don't need the lights now because spoiler alert, I did not find the lantern. And then a coloring book. Um, I swear I saw Halloween ones before, but I could not find them at the Dollar Tree that I went to on that particular day but I did get a coloring book. And then from Walmart, I saw some Jack Skellington pajamas that I loved, but I don't even really like The Nightmare Before Christmas that much. And also they were $20. So I was like, no, thank you. But I did kind of find some Halloween pajamas. I'm wearing them right now, actually. I found some shorts on clearance for $3 and they're black and they have some like baby pink stars on them and some white stars and some white crescent moons. And I was like, that's kind of Halloween-y. So in my mind, I have Halloween pajamas. And there's more on my list, but the last thing I wanted to mention is that Walmart, they have this new brand. It's their own brand. It's called Better Goods, I think. And they came out with some of the pumpkin shaped pasta. When it first came out, my mom was like, oh, do you want to get a box? But I was trying to be frugal and I was like, no, I was like, let's just get it next month. Well, little did I know, apparently my Walmart is only going to stock, I don't know, eight boxes of it because the shelves where it was at, they have not been restocked ever since the pasta initially came out. I'm so devastated. Not only devastated, but now I also have to figure out what kind of festive Halloween food I want to make. I was so excited to have pasta on Halloween night. But anyway, this spread is finished. Next, I have several, not several, I have a few spreads for my reading journal. These are all things that I read in September. This spread is about a BL manga called Terano-kun and Kumazaki-kun. My theme for September was basically just 
school life, which is kind of what I read all the time anyway, but I did feel like it was more appropriate because, you know, September is sort of back to school season. I mostly wanted to read this one because it's published by Puma, which is the same company that publishes Happy of the End. And I really like their work. I feel like it's really high quality. All of the translations are good. So I want to read more of what they published. Definitely like they also um, published Qualia Under the Snow and I've already read that in the past, but I think I might reread it this winter to see like an official translation. And they also just recently, like maybe two weeks ago, a week ago, published Wolfpack, which is by the same mangaka as Fangs. And I definitely have to read that. I kind of forgot that that was coming out. And I also forgot about my library books that I'm going to be reading in October. So those did not end up in my October TBR list either, even though there's definitely a vampire manga that I'm going to be reading from my library. But anyway, this story is pretty straightforward. One character seems like he's like a goody two shoes, but he's actually really mischievous. And the other one, he looks like a delinquent, but he's actually like a very soft, kind guy. Their relationship is really, really cute. And also what I really liked is that it's an established relationship. Like when you start out the manga, they're already dating. I feel like I never see that, which is a shame because that's probably one of my favorite romance tropes. I like when someone just like kind of plunks me down into someone's like already existing relationship. And then I get to see, you know, the ins and outs of it. There are things like domestic thrillers where you see a relationship that's been going on a long time and you see like kind of everything that's wrong with it and how it's deteriorating. And then there are things like this story where the love is still fresh and new and that's like its own obstacle. I think that's really refreshing. I will say though, I was not expecting it to be so explicit. Usually when you read a school life story, like there might be, you know, a scene at the very end of the very last chapter, or maybe it won't even be in the last chapter. It'll be like in the bonus chapter, but not in this manga. I was like, oh, the thing that, <laughs> the thing that really got me was like at school, no way, <laughs> no way, absolutely not. So if you're like me and you kind of enjoy realism in your stories, this one is a little bit silly, a little bit ridiculous. At school, that's crazy. Oh, and in this spread, I'm using some stickers that I've used before in the past. I found them on Twitter, so I will link the tweet in the description box. Also, not related to this spread, but I made a spread without all of you. I'll show it to you at the end of the video, of course, when I'm putting all of my spreads in my journals. But basically, I wanted to quickly talk about that story as well. I finished season one of a BL manhwa called Be My Baby, and it's so ridiculous as well. It's kind of set, I think it's in, set in the future. It's like our world, except genetics, like the science of genetics has advanced a lot more. And the main character is like the top genetic scientist in Korea. And he's working on this project to help women with fertility issues. He's essentially created like an artificial womb. He calls it an egg and he had it implanted in himself to ensure basically that like it would work. And his brother keeps telling him, you need to take that thing out of your stomach. You don't know what that's going to do to you. Well, in addition to that, he is always thirsting after one of his friend's older brothers. And this older brother, he is basically like genetically perfect. And because of that, our main character, he wants some of his genetic material. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and the male lead is just so sick of it because basically every time the main character gets drunk, he like will not stop pestering him about having some of his genetic material. And so one day the male lead is like, I'm fed up with this. I'm fed up with you. Fine, I'll give you what you want. And he kind of thinks he's teaching him a lesson. Little does he know that egg is inside of the main character's stomach. I feel like it's not really a spoiler to say that like, yes, he ends up pregnant. The main character ends up pregnant. It's not an Omegaverse story. And also as much as I recommend it, I will say the pacing for season one, like again, I don't wanna spoil anything, but basically by the time season one ends, you're kind of just getting into the conflict essentially, like the fact that the main character is pregnant. It's so incredibly funny though. And also I absolutely love the paneling. I love when artists really take advantage of the fact that it is a webcomic and that you will be scrolling. Also the artist of it worked on another series I was reading called Antidote, which I loved, but it got canceled. But since I didn't get to show you me making that spread, I thought I would also still talk about the plot of it because it's a really fun manhwa and I wanted to recommend it to anyone who thinks something like that might sound good. The next spread is for a manga called My Oh My Atomikun. And if I were to do superlatives at the end of the year, I would definitely put this in one of my top favorites. It was so, so good. Honestly, it almost doesn't even feel like a BL in a sense. It kind of just feels like a coming of age story. Like there is romance involved, but more so it feels like this character exploration of the main character kind of understanding things about himself and understanding things about how other people work. I absolutely love it. Also, this is just volume one, which makes me so excited. I'm not sure if it's complete in Japan yet. I would say probably, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many volumes it'll be. But anyway, this is just volume one. I'm so excited to see how the story develops. 
So as I was saying, the main character is a high school student and in the words of Chet Baker, he falls in love too easily. He falls in love too fast. He gets random crushes on his classmates, specifically his male classmates, because he actually has girls coming up to him at school all the time and confessing. He doesn't even understand how any of them could possibly like him, like girls from different classes and stuff, because it's like, he doesn't even know them. They don't know him, which is funny because he also doesn't really know the people that he ends up interested in either. But he finds it hard to know how to turn down their confessions because when he was younger, he confessed to one of his friends that he liked him and his friend was just kind of like, ew. So now Atami, he doesn't know what to do whenever he is presented with someone else's feelings like that. He also has divorced parents and he lives with his father, but his dad is kind of either at work or if he's not at work, he has a girlfriend. So he's kind of out and about with her and he doesn't really spend that much time with his son. They don't really have deep conversations. They don't really talk about life. They don't really talk about emotions. So it's kind of up to Atami to navigate the world and interpersonal relationships by himself. And in volume one, you just see him meeting different people. His friend that he makes at school invites him over to his house eventually. And his mom and his sister are so nice to Atami. They basically tell him like, hey, you have second household here. If you need somewhere to go, if you need to have dinner, please stop by. And there's just this like, mundane atmosphere to the whole entire story that I love so much. It's really, really hard to find stories that have this kind of feeling. It's really just a slice of life coming of age story. It feels so realistic too, to be having like revelations like that when you're younger, you know, like when suddenly dots connect in your head and you're like, oh. And like I said, there is romance, but kind of also not. Like there's no clear male lead right now. And I kind of wonder if there will even be one by the end of the series. Like maybe it'll just be a Tommy kind of going through all of these crushes and learning about himself in the process the whole entire time. Like maybe there will be no end game. Like maybe there's no relationship at the end of it. And that would be perfectly fine too. There also might be new characters that are introduced in later volumes. Like we might not even have met the character that is in game if there is one. I think this is such a rare and special manga. I almost wish I hadn't read it yet because I don't even know when volume two will be out, let alone if there are any other volumes after that. I will definitely be continuing with it no matter what because when you find a gem like this, you have to hold on to it. The last spread I'm making for this video is a September reading log. I said I was going to be trying to do more of these and I'm keeping my word so far. I read some things that I just really didn't feel like making spreads about. Like for example, the artwork I'm using in this spread is like bonus artwork from 17 Syrups, which was a BL manga I read. I think it had been on my TBR for probably like two years. I don't know if I was waiting for the scan team to be finished with it or what, but it was good. It just wasn't, I don't know why I was like so looking forward to it. It was a good manga, don't get me wrong, but it just like, it wasn't anything crazy. The artwork was really beautiful though. So maybe that's what it was. It's just about this high school student who kind of accidentally falls in love with this other student at his school. He's the other student kind of gives like playboy vibes and he hates people like that. But of course he ends up liking him. And the male lead, his home life is not so great. I actually feel like if the manga had been longer, it would have been really good, like maybe even two volumes because I feel like there was some trauma that could have been unpacked. And I think it would have been like a really beautiful emotional story. I thought it was good. I think to me, it's just the fact that it's not memorable. Like even as I'm recording this, I'm having trouble even remembering like specific scenes from it. I mostly just remember them being in the nurse's office at school. I also read volume one of Goku Raku Guy. I hope that's how you pronounce it. I don't even know, but I hope that's how. And I don't know if I wanna to talk too much about it yet because I feel like I'm going to try to finish reading it soon. It depends on how my reading month goes for October, but I do kind of wanna finish it sooner rather than later. It's not a BL, but it's about this guy and this lady who kind of fight monsters, MAGA. They're part of like a bigger agency of people who are working to exterminate the MAGA. It was only volume one, so you know, you kind of have to get all the characters, all the players on the board, but I like it so far. There are also beast men in this world, so that's fascinating. And the main character, Alma, I would say his powers work kind of like Dingy's, like he like pulls this thing out of his chest and like suddenly, you know, he's in X Games mode. And then I don't know what's going on with Miss Tao. I don't even know if she has any powers or if she's just a baddie. One of her lines was something like, fear was the first thing I killed off. I was like, oh, okay. It seems really interesting, so I definitely want to keep reading. I think there are three volumes out as of right now. 
I also read Incidents Around the House, which is a horror novel. I talked about it, I think in my last video. I can't really recommend or not recommend it because I read about 65% of it and then skimmed the whole rest of the way through like to see what happened at the end. I just don't read horror novels usually. So I don't know if it was a good one, a bad one. It was definitely really creepy. I just feel like I can't even read it because it's so far outside of what I usually read. And then the last thing I read that I haven't yet talked about is volume two of My Beautiful Man. It took me so long to read the sequel because not once but twice, I forgot to get my books from Hoopla. You get to pick four books per month and I forgot, I think it was July and August. But anyway, the series is kind of sad. It's about this boy who's getting bullied at school, but he kind of starts to like one of his bullies. I will say the one that he likes is not really like the meanest of them or anything like that, but he still kind of bosses him around. In volume two, I feel like you definitely see the power balance kind of shift, like the dynamic sort of shift. But volume one is definitely kind of sad and like maybe even uncomfortable at times, but I'm just so intrigued by it. To me, like this is my version of toxic, or I guess like a version of toxic that I can actually deal with because it seems like there is some redemption. Unlike with a lot of stories where the male lead will have physically hurt the main character, those are just not my cup of tea, but something like this is way more palatable to me. And yeah, that is everything I read in September. And this was the end for all of the spreads I made this time. So now all we have to do is go put them into my journals. So how is everyone's journal ween going? I have not yet started reading anything from my TBR list because it just doesn't feel fall enough yet. I did decorate for Halloween, which was really fun, but it just doesn't feel quite like fall yet. So I am waiting closer to Halloween to get into some of those stories. Also, I saw a Twitter thread about spooky BL stories to read around this time of year. And one of the things that was on it was Count Tachibana. I haven't looked through the whole entire thread yet, so I don't know, but I absolutely love Count Tachibana and I got my notification. I don't know how many days ago now, but the story is finished. Chapter 70 has been uploaded and it's free on Legend. I recommend it to everyone because it's just like, it's so good. I cannot understand how it's free. It has the prettiest art of any manhwa I've ever seen. So I also might need to read that this month. I don't know. I've reread season one twice now. So I feel like I need to reread it again though to prepare myself for season two. I need to retweet that tweet actually because I've just have it sitting open in a tab because I haven't looked through it yet. I really have not been on social media that much. Also, I'm so sorry that this video is late. It was kind of my worst fear that something would set me back at the very beginning of the month, the very beginning of Journal Ween. And of course it just had like a domino effect. Like half of the month is already gone. We're halfway through Journal Ween. Time goes by so fast and it makes me sad because it's so hard to enjoy the seasons when they're actually happening because corporations are telling you move on you have a new season to buy new things for and social media is telling you move on you have a new season to buy new things for i feel like october has this unfair countdown clock where it's like you got to get in all of your fall activities before it's october 31st because on november 1st suddenly it's no longer fall and actually it's christmas and also for me personally the only holidays i celebrate are valentine's day and halloween so to me halloween is already kind of the last fun thing of the year so i just hate to see the season rush it makes me so mad when people act like i'm the grinch or something too they'll be like oh you poor thing you don't give any gifts you don't gather you don't have any family you don't have any special food. Like, please, I'm not <laughs> on top of a mountain, <laughs> like looking down at the town and being like, they're too loud. I want what they have. <laughs> anyway, all of that was just to say, I love Halloween and I hate that it's being rushed out the door. Let her linger a little bit longer. Thank you so much to everyone for watching today's video. I hope that you're having a good October, a good journal ween. Thank you for hanging out with me once again today. All of the links to my social media accounts, including my Pinterest board, where I have all of the items that I used in these spreads are in my description box, as well as the links to my stationary deco kits. I can't wait to start properly getting into my TBR, my TBW list and making spreads for all of those things and then sharing the spreads with you. Thank you again for all of your support. I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.